My name is Janet Freeman Daly. I'm a metastatic lung cancer patient and I'm just a few months shy of six years surviving. My hope is that one day all lung cancer patients, indeed all cancer patients, will be able to be tested for biomarkers and be able to have a drug selected that is targeted for their type of cancer. These specific guidelines concern themselves with molecular testing. So this is looking at changes in genes, DNA, that's associated with cancer. It's a guideline provide a practical treatment of lung cancer patient. Guidelines is a tool for ensuring that the right treatment comes to the right patients. The knowledge of biomarkers and testing for lung cancer patients is evolving very rapidly. It's difficult for a lot of doctors to keep up. Being able to have these guidelines current and be able to inform doctors on the best way to get testing to give us the best chance of survival is really important to the entire lung cancer community, but especially to us patients. Since the last report, which was published in 2013, several things has happened. We have identified more important targets for new drugs, and we have developed a lot more new drugs. The original guidelines recommended testing two genes, EGFR and ALK. We're now recommending adding a third gene, which is ROS1. So there are now three genes being recommended instead of just two. And in addition, there are five other genes that we think are important, but not necessarily have to be done universally. And so what we're recommending in this case is a newer technology called next generation sequencing, which can be used to look at many genes at once, and then we can include these five as well as the other three. We think about the global situation and integrate these uh, geographical differences. For example, the EGFR mutation is very frequent in Asian patient, but not in the Caucasian uh, the population. There are also some changes about looking at circulating uh, cancer DNA in blood, so-called liquid biopsy, that would enable us to test patients with lung cancer potentially without having to get an invasive procedure like a surgery to get tissue out, but rather to look for changes that can be seen with a blood test. Lung cancer treatment is evolving very rapidly, and just because you don't have a particular biomarker at a given time doesn't mean that testing can't benefit you. When I was first diagnosed in 2011, I was tested for one biomarker. There was only one allowed in the guidelines at that time. A little later, a new drug got approved for a second biomarker, and I tested for that, and I was negative both times. And then I entered a trial and tested for 10 other biomarkers, and I was negative for them. But the next year, there was a new biomarker that they hadn't tested for. I had tested positive for that, for the ROS1, and that's why I have had no evidence of disease for four years. I was able to do that because I asked my doctors, and if my doctors didn't know, I found someone who did. It was the online patient community that helped me make the connections that I need. So if you're a lung cancer patient and have adenocarcinoma, please talk to your doctor about tumor testing, talk to your doctor about biomarkers, and if they aren't quite up to speed because things are changing really fast, look at the guidelines, talk to knowledgeable patients in some of the patient forums, uh, contact lung cancer advocacy organizations that might be able to help you find other testing that can help you identify the biomarkers. It could make a huge difference in your treatment.